to join us here in a, in a little bit, and I'm waiting for them to give me the, the thumbs up, and then we'll get started this morning. All right. So welcome to chapel. We are so glad you guys are here with us. Two big thumbs up. Can everybody, get, everybody give me two big thumbs up? Awesome. And now I want you to give me two legs standing up. Can you guys do that for me? Very good. And what you just showed me is this. You have two functioning thumbs. You have two functioning legs. And now I'm going to see if you guys have your, your motion arms. Are they functioning? Because we're going to start off our chapel this morning by singing a song. Can you wave your arms around a little bit? Show me? Okay. Now, we're not just going to wave our arms around crazy as we sing this morning. We're going to sing a song called Every Move I Make. And did you know that? Every move you make can be done to praise God. So this morning as we sing this song, we've got some motions. So uh, we're going to help you out here. Um, we're going to sing in the chorus. I'm going to say, waves of mercy. Can you guys do that with me? Give me some waves here. Waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh, my God, this love, how can it be? All right, and then when we do the na-na's, you're going to get your hands up in the air and say, ah, na 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 just like that. Good job, guys. All right, let's worship God this morning, every move I make. Every move I make, I make in you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Woohoo! Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Thank you, guys. And this morning, we, we're going to stay standing as we, as we remember who we come here to worship. And this God that we worship is three in one. So would you guys join with me with the words that are up on the screen, our invocation. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our call to worship this morning, as it has been the past few weeks, is based on a passage from Jeremiah chapter 1. Can everybody give me a one up in the air? Verses 4 to 8. There we go. Nice job, guys. Uh, there's one part that you're going to repeat. I'm going to give you the leader part, and you guys are going to repeat saying these words. You're going to say, God knows us. God chose us. We are his. So that's the same part you guys are going to say all throughout. So I'm going to say the leader part, and you repeat that back to me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. 
I chose you as a prophet to the nations. God knows us. God chose us. We are his. But Lord, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. God knows us. God chose us. We are his. The Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. God knows us. God chose us. We are his. But you must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. God knows us. God chose us. We are his. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you. God knows us. God chose us. We are his. You guys can have a seat. Now, as we enter this, this next time of our, of our chapel worship this morning, uh, we want to use this as a time to reflect, a time to think about in our minds and in our hearts some of those, those times where, where we, uh, we didn't always do what God expects of us, or maybe we, we didn't do what our, our teachers asked of us or our parents, and we tried to do our own thing. And this is a time of confession, and we have a God who listens to us, even in those times where we don't do what we should, and he loves us still. So in our confession this morning, Austin, you can bring that next slide up. There's a part that you guys are going to repeat back to us, and it says, Jesus, we need your love and forgiveness. Can you guys say that with me? Jesus, we need your love and forgiveness. And there's some motions to that. Is that what I saw? Okay. So how do those motions go, Mrs. Shanks? Okay, Jesus, we need your love and forgiveness. Got okay. it? Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll say the part of the leader. It says, God knows us. He knows the times we are loving to others and when we are not. Jesus, we need your love and forgiveness. God knows the times we are afraid and don't trust him. Jesus, we need your love and forgiveness. God knows when we think mean thoughts, say things that are hurtful, or do things that aren't loving towards others. Jesus, we need your love and forgiveness. You know, God didn't choose us because we're always good. He knew we needed Jesus' forgiveness. So Jesus came into the world and died for us on the cross. He loves us that much. So because he died for us and rose again on the third day, we know our sins are forgiven, and we can say, God knows us, God chose us, we are his. Morning, everybody. All right, it's so good to see everybody. We are going to start out with our little song. Right, Pastor Jeff? Sure. You ready? Mr. Hendrick's much taller than me. <laughs> All right, there we go. It's Thursday morning. We're here travel time with Miss Wilcox's second grade. We'll sing a song. We'll play a game. We'll tell a story about God's amazing grace Cause it's less than 948 Lane You know it's less than 948 Lane You know it's less than 948 Lane All right. You've been talking about kids of the Bible, and we're just going to do a little bit of a review really quick to see what you know about this kid of the Bible. Let me give you the clues, and then you raise your hand if you think you know who it is. This was a boy, and his father gave him a coat of many colors. Then his brothers put him in this well, and they sold, oh, oh, you guys already know? What's his name? David. Not David. Who? Do you know? 
Joseph! All right. So let's do, this one's a hard one. All right? This was, I'm going to do two and one. Are you ready? Here we go. This was a little baby. And when he was not that old, his mom put him in this basket and then put him down in the Nile River. Who could it be? Moses. And then the bonus is he had a little sister. He had a sister who made sure that he was okay. She peeked out. You know what his what her name is? Oh, so close. So close. Mir Miriam. There you go. And then there was this boy who had this thing called a slingshot, and he took five stones. What was his name? Yeah. David. All right. All so right. that brings us to our story for today. But before we begin, we have a little game, right? We're gonna, we got a game that's going to introduce. And by the time we're done playing this game, I'm wondering if you're going to know the story. So you have to introduce the game. Okay. So in our... And, and our Ms. Wilcox's second grade is going to be helping us today. Yes, they are. So I don't know if you know anything about this story, but it has something to do with, do you guys know what this is? It's a lunchbox. How many of you guys have lunchboxes? Pastor Jeff and I have two big lunchboxes yep. because we're big people and we like yep. to eat. This All is right. my lunchbox. This is Mrs. Shanks's lunchbox. Yeah, box. mine's a little bit smaller. And then I have like, wow. I have like cans of tuna fish. Hmm. Two cans. Two cans of tuna fish. Hmm, I wonder what that story's gonna be about. And then we also have. Let's count how many. Okay, count with me. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We have like, well, we're gonna say they're bread. All right. Could we, we even say they're loaves? Loaves? Five, two fishes and five loaves of bread. Anybody know and what story we're going to be talking box. about? You getting it? You getting it in the classroom? All right. All right. All right. So but, we got an activity. So we do. So we're going to. And we're, we're going to pick from Mrs. Wilcox's Yes, we are there. from Miss, Miss Wilcox's room. I just need two volunteers who like to pack lunches in the morning. All right. Do you want to come up? You can go over to my lunchbox over there. You come up and you go over to Pastor Jeff's lunchbox. All right. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna start out with this activity, and Mrs. Shanks is going to explain what you're gonna have to do. All right. So here's what they have to do, and we can cheer them on. Tell everybody your name. Hudson. This is Hudson. Hudson. So let's give Hudson a clap. All right. And over here we have tell everybody your name. Laney. This is Laney. Give Laney a big hand. All right, so what Hudson and Laney, all right, what Hudson and Laney are going to do is they're going to pat, pack up a lunchbox, and here's how they're going to do it. They're going to put the cans of tuna in there for the two fish. Then they're going to take the loaves of bread that we have, and they're going to fold them up so they fit into a baggie, one, one round thing in each baggie, and then they're going to put this all in the lunchbox, close it up, and say done. All right. And whoever does it So you've got to look at your lunchbox because there's an oh, opening yeah, we're up gonna, here. Oh, are you going to open it up? They, no, they got to open it. They have to open it up. What? Not, not yet. Not, not, we haven't said go. Oh, I yeah. Say go. They are eager. Okay. All, All right. right. That's good. Here we go. Right. On the count of three, we'll say go. Let's not scream it. And then we can cheer for Lainey and Hudson, but don't scream too loud. And people in the classroom can cheer as well, right? And you can guess who's going to do it quicker. Is it going to be Lainey or How Hudson? How many people think Lainey's going to win? How many people think Hudson's going to win? Ooh, right. let's go. All right, here we go. On the count of three, and then we're going to say go, and then they're going to go. Are you ready? You help me out. One, two, three, go. Come on, lady. Come on, Hudson. <laughs> go, lady. Go, lady. Go, Hudson. You don't have to seal them. Just get them in the bag. Just seal get them, them in the bag. Just put them in there. No. Uh-oh. Come on. 
She's right got now, two Lainey in seems there. to be in the lead. How many does Hudson have in there? Gotta pick it up, Hudson. Ooh. All right. Keep going, Lainey. Keep going, Hudson. They're almost Ooh, there. Oh, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. Three. Ooh, it's close. They're doing good. Woo. She's getting putting closer. in number four. Where's Hudson at? He put in number four. Oh, he's on number five. Okay. She's on number five. Number five. Tuna fish in there and zip it up. Put the tuna zip, in, in there. Put zip the tuna. It zip, zip it, it up. up. Zip it up. Got to zip it up. Zip it up. And yell done. Oh. oh it was a photo finish. By a smidge. He just barely got it. Let's go. give them a hand. All right. All right. So we're going to. We're going to make a, oh, do you want to show the video first? All right. You guys Why don't you go? guys just stay here? Okay, oh. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you up front, I messed up on the video. It's not like I've never taken video before, but I forgot. I got to do it sideways, and I took it up, so they're going to look a little elongated. It almost looks like if you've ever looked in a funny mirror. Okay, so it's not, they don't look like this look like regular but the picture is kind of that way all right so let's watch the video we asked a simple question what would you put in your lunch box box bananas oranges a Listen salad and goldfish okay. ice cream candy and a big gallon of juice okay pickles cheese it's duck and tuna all right ice cream Chocolate cookie and okay, chips, orange, go fish, carrots, pizza, chips, and then oranges, and then veggie, uh, steak, pizza. Oranges and some cake. Chicken, steak, and frog legs and get chips, sub, and blue Doritos. Spaghetti, Gatorade, gummy bears, and ice cream. Apple, veggie, veggies, oranges, and carrots. Chocolate, ice cream, pizza, and candy. Ice cream, pumpkin pie, carrots, and vegetables. Right. Oh, what about Ms. Wilcox? What would she like? I would do tacos, tortilla chips, salsa, and lemonade. Mm. What about Mrs. Shanks? Oh, let's see. In my lunch, I think I would like to have tacos, Fritos, grapes, and chocolate ice cream. Very good. All right. Okay. So we're going to have the second grade come up. And as they're coming up and getting, not this, Ms. Wilcox is second grade. They're going to come up and get in position. As they're doing that, there's a part in the story they're going to tell. There's a part where we all talk. There's parts where they talk. And then there's we'll parts where we all talk. And the first one goes like this. Put it up on the screen, please. The next slide. All right, so let's try it together. We're, when we get to this point, I'm going to point to you, and we're all going to say, Rumbly, rumbly goes my belly. Feed me peanut butter and jelly. All right, let's try that together. One, two, three. Rumbly, rumbly goes my belly. Feed me peanut butter and jelly. All right, I, even if that's not what you like, you're going to say it anyway. And then there's a later part in the story when we're going to say this. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. Fish and loaves are mighty yummy, all right? So let's say that together on three. Here we go. One, two, three. 
yummy, yummy in my tummy. Fish and loaves are mighty yummy. All right, so Mr. Austin, you have the script up there, so you'll know when that's coming up. So go back to that first screen with uh, the name of the... This is the story that we're going to tell, and you should know part of that story already. So the second graders are going to help us out. You can move the mics anyway. All right, let me see. Let's get them. I want them more in front of them so that... Okay, now, having a mic here doesn't mean you can't be loud. In fact, you need to be good and loud when you do your group parts, right? All right, you're going to do it nice and loud. Let me lower this just a tad. All right. And in the classroom, in your classroom, you can say those same all parts, too, when we get to those. All right, we ready? Are we ready, everybody? Everybody? Nice and loud. Okay. It had been a long day. The crowd had sat a long time. A very long time. Jesus had a long talk. A very long talk. And we need that line on the screen, right? Yeah, but there you and go. I'll point to it. And him. it was getting late, and the people were getting hungry. Rumbly, rumbly, peanut butter and jelly. But the disciples said, send them back home. But Jesus said, no, you feed them. There's too many people. Philip started counting the people. One, two, three, four, five. I think he lost count somewhere around 4,896. Let's, Let's just say 5,000. The disciples all said, That's a lot of food. How are we going to pay for it? That's a lot of money. No money, no food, they said. What are we going to do? Just then, a boy came up to them. Let's call him Henry. Hey. Hi, Henry. He told the disciples that they could have his lunch to share. That's so, Henry. Andrew asked him what he had in his lunchbox. Five loaves and two fish. All the disciples said, That's not enough. But Jesus said, That's more than enough. So Jesus had all the people sit down in groups of family and friends. And he said a prayer over the five loaves of bread and two fish. Then he and the disciples began to pass it out. And guess what? There was more than enough. How much more? Well, that was more. The disciples were amazed. Were amazed. Then all the people said, all of you now what? even in the classroom even in the classroom they can come up with their own ideas right because what we had was a lunch box right and how many fish everybody two, two. how many loaves of bread wow. yeah or, and, and you know what mrs shanks yeah. i know we used a tortilla in our game mm -hmm. but when we're talking loaves of bread we weren't talking like those long ones in those it would have been a little round loaf, kind of like a tortilla, just a little thicker. If you've ever had a pita bread, that would have been like more like that. All right, so the boy but had... But Mrs. Shanks, do you yeah. think that you should be able to take those five, like those two cans of tuna fish and those five tortillas and feed everybody in here? Could you really do that? 
Could I take that food and feed all of you? Well, if we split it up, how much do you think? You would have a whole lunch worth, or do you think you'd just have a little bitty bite? Little, little bitty, bitty bite. bite, okay? Yeah. But these people, and it wasn't just all of us. It was 5,000 people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot more. That's a lot of people. But anyway, this boy had ordinary things, and Jesus was able to turn those ordinary things into something extraordinary, right? So what we thought would be kind of fun, because we're going to use our imaginations here, all right? So, oh, I need to have, would you come up here? And would you pick something out of my bag here? Doesn't matter which item. It doesn't item. matter. <gasps> okay, so you can go sit back down. I have a jar here. What, if you used your imaginations... What could this jar be? What could this jar be? Yes, Lainey. Oh, it could hold spices in it. That would be a good idea. Absolutely. Do you have an idea? Jelly. Jelly. Let's think of something besides food now. Something besides food. What could I do with my jar? And hopefully people in the classroom are thinking too. Yeah. What do you have? Ooh, put a little tadpole in it. Oh, wow. That's a cool idea. Do you have a good idea? Yeah. What? Grasshopper. A grasshopper. Now, no food, no animals, something else. Yeah. A, a snow globe. Wow, that is what creative. What great imaginations. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking I could put some rice in here and some objects, and it could be like an I spy thing. And look at all the objects. All right, let's try another. They're more creative than I thought. They are. They're wow. Very creative. All right, so let's pick another item. Would you come up and pick one of the items out of there? Ooh, this is weird. What is it? Oh, my goodness. This is going to be hard. So I know we use a toothbrush to brush our teeth. Yeah. So, but I don't want you to say that. I want you to think of something creative that I could do with my toothbrush. Yes. And do what with the toothbrush? Oh, that, you, know what I, you know what I could do? I could dip it in butter and spread it all over my loaf of bread. Would that work? Yeah. You got an idea? Yeah. A supply for something. All right. We've got uh, a teacher with her hand up. I oh, think we really? should ask the teacher. Oh, yes. Teacher lady. Ooh, you can scrub things with it. I wonder, yeah. Yes, how about this? A back scratcher. Oh, I've got an idea. Oh, you got an idea? It could be my microphone. Every move I make, I make. <laughs> okay. I think we should probably go. We All have, right. you know what? This is something teachers you can do in your classroom because I have, and we have to go on because we're running out of time, but like I have a scarf, so think of that. Maybe you can do that in your classroom. And then I brought something really cool. What's this? What could you use a broom for? All right, so think upon those things, and we're going to sing our song. Boys and girls, are you ready? All right, stand up. All right, this is the last week for singing this because we'll have something different next week. But for this week, we're going to sing this one more time. So by now, you've learned it. You should know the motions. But we'll, second graders will help sing and show the motions too. Here we go. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I can love, cause I'm loved, 
I can follow where he leads. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, the verse from today. Here we go. There was a boy up on a hillside with 5,000 gathered there. He offered up five loaves and his two fish to share. Well, Jesus took the bread and blessed it, and like manna, God supplied. And soon the bread and fish we given were multiplied. Here we go. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can love because I'm loved. I can follow where he leads. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right. So as the second graders go back to their seats and Mr. Hendrick comes up, let's just remember that that story is so cool to me because, you know why? Because it's only one of the four Gospels tell us it was a boy who offered up his lunch. And sometimes we think that we don't have that much, but God uses whatever we have and he uses it in ways to spread out his love to everybody. God is that great provider. He even took a cross. And I saw some of you were noticing all the crosses up there. And those crosses are, were very ordinary in the day of Jesus. But God took a cross and multiplied his love for the whole world when Jesus gave his life and his love to us. Well, thank you guys for sharing that uh, special message with us. And what really goes with that story of uh, abundant meals, having more than even what you need, is a chance for us to realize what we've been given, be thankful, and then offer it back to God. And that's what we do with our offering. So we want to highlight uh, one thing that we're doing this month, which is Socktober. So some of you guys have been bringing in socks, and this is really to benefit people in our community here in Ocala, right? Mm -hmm. We're benefiting yes. people who are in need, who don't have normal things like you guys take maybe take for granted, like the socks that are on your feet. So have we been getting some socks in? We have shirts? been getting socks, but I think there's a couple classes maybe in here who have brought in monetary offerings oh. today. So if they could bring that up, and we'll just set it right up here on the step. So if anybody... Yeah, we can go and buy socks with it. Can you bring that up here? Yeah, thank you. And you can set it right down here on the step. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, if not just socks, but uh, also your monetary offerings. If you guys have that, we will purchase socks with those things. And as we're talking about overabundance, you know, you guys did such a great job collecting items for Operation Christmas Child and money for that. And there's actually another uh, opportunity now through our school, through our anchor club. They're going to be passing out some boxes to classrooms, and uh, we wanted to show you just a, a video. I know we've done the round of this, and some people, I saw you guys at the packing party on this past uh, weekend. 665 boxes. 665 boxes were, were collected and put together. Awesome, awesome job. Uh, so now we've got another chance to, to collect some more Operation Christmas Child boxes. And so we want to uh, wrap, uh, wrap you guys back into this and want to show a real brief video that uh, talks about packing those boxes. And now it's time for How to Pack a Shoebox with Bob and Larry, the part of the show where Bob and Larry come out and pack a shoebox. Howdy, kids. I'm Larry the Cucumber. And I'm Bob the Tomato. And we're here to tell you about Operation Christmas Child and how you can pack a shoebox full of gifts that'll go to a child in another country. It's a great way to remind them that they're special and loved by God and about the real meaning of Christmas, the birth of Jesus. Let's get started. 
Nice ball. I love these. I've got tons of them. <laughs> Little help? Sure. I put together something I think I'll help. Roll film, Cordy. I meant with the ball. The first thing you'll need to pack a shoebox for Operation Christmas Child is a shoebox. What can I say? I like to collect shoeboxes. Decide if you want your gift to go to a boy or a girl ages 2 to 4, 5 to 9, or 10 to 14. Have an adult help you go to SamaritansPurse.org slash VeggieTales. You can print your label from here and check the box you want. Then, tape the label to the box. Now comes the fun part. You can add toys, school supplies, maybe even a French pea. Right! I did not have my passport! Okay, then maybe a toothbrush. Be sure to send only toys that are new and unused. And remember, don't send any kind of food items. Plus, no toy guns or war toys. But you can send a picture and a note. When you're done, bring your shoebox to the nearest Operation Christmas Child drop-off location. You can even build your box online. Samaritanspurse.org slash VeggieTales has all the info. Whether you pack your box yourself or build it online, you can follow your box online to find out which country it goes to. It's a really great way to show a child they're special in love. Uh, nice job, Larry. Thanks, Bob. Here, let me give you a hand with that. <laughs> yeah! Wow, that's one heavy baseball. You sure it's not too heavy for the kids? Bob? This has been How to Pack a Shoebox with Bob and Larry. Tune in next time to hear Larry say... Bob, talk to me, man. So we wanted to use that as just an opportunity to thank you guys first for being a part of this ministry up to this point when we raised money, we, we brought in items, you guys did awesome with that, coming and packing up boxes, but there is another opportunity through our school anchor club to still uh, take part in this if you didn't have a chance to already. So uh, let's go on to our time of prayer. And in our time of prayer today, I wanted to highlight five things. And this is going to be a, an echo prayer. So I'm going to say uh, uh, a line talking about our adoration for God, our confession to God, our, uh, how we thank God and what we need, and um, how we submit to God. So uh, in those five things, uh, I'm going to say a line, and I want you to repeat it back to me. Let's go to God and pray. Dear God, we praise you. You are awesome. Sometimes we don't do what we should. And we are sorry. We are thankful for your forgiveness. We are thankful for your love. Lord, there are things that we need. There are people who are hurting. There are people who are sick. There are some things that we desire but in everything help us to submit to you in Jesus name we pray amen and as we do with every chapel uh, we want to um, we want to go to the Lord's prayer which is a chance for us to pray a prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray let's say this together our Father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And now, as we do with every chapel, uh, we want to stand up. And we want to be reminded of this special blessing that God has done for us. So if you guys would join us in our motions and closing with our St. John blessing. God the Father sent his Son down into the world to suffer and die upon a cross for you and for me. All right, now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you guys. Have a blessed week.